Crossing Olympus, the chess-like tactical game that involves the use of the gods. You can play as almost any of the main gods in the game, such as Apollo, Ares, Hera, Poseidon, Athena, and some I probably couldn't pronounce even if I wanted to. The idea of the game is pretty simple. You want to get to your opponent's gate, and if you can do that, you win the game. What's interesting about this game, like chess, is that the different pieces have different moves. Not only that, but they also have different attacks. If you're going to be playing a Final Fantasy tactics style game where you place a character on your gate, and you can move it or you can attack, and they all have different attack patterns, they have different move patterns, uh, similar to games like Onitama as well. It's kind of got a mix of both of those games put into this chess-like war game. It's for two players, it takes about an hour or so to play, and it's probably for ages 13 and up and that's the basic principle of the game you get 10 or 12 different gods to play with you can start with three in hand and draw them as you play them down on your board or you can start with all of them if you want as a variant and play them that way as well there's different characters that have special abilities that can chain their enemies and stop them from moving and attacking there's characters that can attack like a knight in chess and others that just simply will attack straight down the board it's an interesting concept for a chess style game that has a little bit of tactics mixed in and the ability to choose to attack or move as well as some special rules that I'll explain below. Let's go ahead and take it down and I'll explain the game, give you a couple rounds of how it's played, how you win, and then we'll come up and I'll discuss the game. So here we have the game Crossing Olympus and as you can see, it plays two players. You get one side and the other, the same gods, but you can play as the light side or the dark side, which is illustrated by the card's coloration. You have this gold color and then you have this black color, but all of the gods are the same, but depending on how you play the game, we'll determine what gods you start out with. The gods are depicted on these little uh, tiles here, which are then placed up like little standees, and they have their health represented on the top of the card, uh, the top of the standee, as well as the artwork down below. You're going to be getting these little things here, which you can add to the standee to illustrate how much life the gods have at any given point in time. And as they lose life, you can go ahead and move this little tracker down to simulate loss of life up to the point where they have no life, which will then destroy them. This is the board of the game and it's set up for the two players. You have the gates on opposite ends and the light side and the dark side. It's similar to chess as to how you would understand the board, but very different conceptually. Uh, basically, this is the starting point where you're going to be releasing the gods from, I guess, Mount Olympus or like, maybe Hades, I'm not sure. And then you're going to be able to move them and attack with them, which is represented by these cards here. Each of the cards has the artwork or illustration of the god on one side and then the name, the health, the movement, attack, and special of each of those gods as well as it kind of explains how the special interacts with each god individually but each god each poseidon on either side if functionally is the same type of god and moves the same way but they all have their own unique movements they all have their own unique attacks and of course specials that do interact in certain ways another component here you have is these chains here these chains are basically things that you're going to be dropping with hades hades is powerful he's the chainer of the dam so whenever he gets next to another player he can chain somebody which will basically put this little guy on top of him which will simulate the character not being able to move or attack it's a very powerful ability but hades himself is not very strong so each of these gods have their own unique benefits and uh drawbacks to them but that's pretty much what you get in the game other than of course the uh, box over there as well as the movement and attack booklet here which explains all the gods how they move and attack and of course their specials illustrated pretty simply on this thing here and then of course the rule book of the game which is comes in two parts so here we have Crossing Olympus, and it's set up for two players. I know it hasn't changed at all, because this is pretty much the setup. You get your gods on one side, which are all the evil ones, and you get your gods on the other, which are all the good ones. And then, of course, you got your chain set up for either player, and then your life tokens or counters that you'll be utilizing for the gods. And then, based on the mode you want to play, you're going to shuffle this deck up, and then you're going to draw three god cards for each player. The other mode is you just start with all of them and play, which is actually probably my favorite. But... In this game mode, you take the three. These are your three. You can look at them. They're basically hidden from the other players. Uh, let's go ahead and put them on top here. And then the other player would do the exact same thing, drawing the three gods. Look at them, hide them in your hand, and then you're ready to go. That's it. That's how simple the game is to start. Now, we're we'll going to choose a player, and I'll choose the light side because the light side of the force is always the better side of the force. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but we can go ahead and look at these guys here. Now, in on your turn, you get three different types of actions. You can go ahead and summon a character, and you're going to place it on the corresponding gate. Or you can move a character. Or 
you can attack with a character. There are special rules, and the special rules are pretty simple. If you already have a character on a gate and you wish to put another character out, when you do that, you can move that character whatever way in which it says it's supposed to move based on the card. Another thing as well, uh, when you place a character down, you can also choose to move or, or attack with that character. And there's one other one, which is whenever you defeat a character of the opposing faction, when that character is on their respective gate, you can choose to move another character of your choice on the board. Okay, so those are pretty much it as far as what you need to do. Now to begin, let's go ahead and have the light player go ahead and choose a character. We'll go ahead and choose Zeus over here, Almighty Zeus. I'll go ahead and place this right here. And then we're going to go ahead and find Zeus with the corresponding standee. Take that character, place it down on his gate, choose one of these little guys here, and place the life, to life uh, counter at the highest, which in this case is going to be 10. Then we can choose to move or attack with him which is only happens whenever you summon a character. And when we look at Zeus here, it tells you how he moves. It shows his HP. And he says he can move one in any direction, which is basically like a king in chess. So he can go here, here, or here. So he'll just go ahead and move one up. He also has an attack, which does 10 damage, and it can do a three, it has to do it in three non-diagonal direct spaces. And direct is generally going to be in a straight line. So it can't be in a straight line diagonally, it can only be in a straight line going this way, or going this way, or this way, or even backwards. And that's how Zeus works. And he's done, that's the end of this player's turn. Now the black, uh, oh also black, he'll get to draw an extra card. He's always, you're always going to have three god cards in your hand, so you get new gods every time you summon a god. Now this player over here, he's got Hermes, he's got Poseidon, he's got Ares. Let's go ahead and do Hermes. So we'll place Hermes out there, put it over here I suppose, draw another god card. Find Hermes on the dark side here and place it here. Go ahead and take a life counter and place it on the corresponding top HP. And then move any three direction. Okay, let's go one, two, and three. And we got his attack. His attack does three damage and it does it in two direct spaces. And in up to two directions. So he can actually do it in two different directions as long as it's a direct space. That's pretty good, right? And then of course, back to this player over here, maybe we can go ahead and summon Ares here. Ares is gonna go ahead and drop on the board, find the corresponding Ares. I think you're getting the idea of how this works. Place it down and he can move three direct spaces. And I believe you can go over your characters. Oh no, you can't, sorry. You can't go over the characters. So you actually be stuck like this. Well, so you gotta be careful. Maybe it'd be better if we had moved Zeus here if we want to summon Ares next. So that way we can actually go ahead and move three direct spaces. And on our next turn, if we have the opportunity, we can do five damage to three direct spaces, which means we can hit Hermes over here. Back to this player's turn here. Does he want to summon? Mm, I don't know. Um, maybe he's going to actually attack. Let's see what he can do. He can do three damage up to two, two spaces. So he can do three damage here. So if he chose to take the action of attack, he can then do two damage, which you go like this. And of course he can do it again, but there's no other characters he can hit, so he'd be done. Back to this player's turn over here. Ares is much a much stronger foe, which means he can do five damage in any three direct spaces, which means he can literally take out Hermes. And that removes him from the game. So this is actually going to uh, remove Hermes from the game because he had a total of five health. Good play on this player's part. And that's the basic idea of the game, right? I think you're getting the idea. Players are going to continue to summon out units and to move them and, of course, attack. And you're going to summon specific interesting types of units that let you do certain things, like being able to move in a knightly way. Because your objective is simply to get to this end point here. If you can get any character here, that is going to symbolize your victory in the game. The other way that would happen to win is if your opponent ran out of gods, in which case you just claim ultimate victory. And that's basically crossing Olympus. I'll go ahead and come up and explain all the different characters here, some of their movements, some of their different special abilities and attacks, because there's a whole lot to exp express and explain. I think it'll be better to come up and do that. Okay, so some caveats for the game. First of all, whenever it says non-diagonal direct spaces, that means it can go up, down, left, or right. But whenever it says direct spaces, that just means in a straight line, which means you could go diagonal. So in, in uh, hindsight, I could have actually made... Uh, what's his face? Ares. He could have actually went diagonal uh, to Zeus and get through, so I didn't actually have to move Zeus. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the characters here. First of all, there is Ares, which we discussed before. He can move three direct spaces. He can do five damage uh, in three direct spaces. And then he has a special called Terror of War, which says he does one damage to enemies when Ares lands on an adjacent space. So whenever you move Ares onto an adjacent space corresponding to another enemy character, they'll take one damage. And you can do that actually to multiple enemies, which is pretty cool. Poseidon is able to move any non th three any non-diagonal movements. 
who does four damage to a box in front of him, and it does a three wide by two rows, so we can actually do this kind of frontal conal attack. He also has a trident wave, which allows him to knock back enemies he attacks by one space. Dionysus, he moves the same way that a knight would in chess, so he does that three, uh, two up and one to the right. Uh, he also attacks for four damage to all enemies on the row in front of him. And then he has Celebration of Wine, which is really good. Whenever he lands on an enemy, you remove that enemy from the game, which means it just gets removed, just like a normal knight would. Dionysus only has 4 HP, though, so almost anything can kill him. Athena, 3 HP. He can, she can move 1 movement in any direction, 3 damage, 3 direct spaces, and then she has Aegis Shield. Friends on adjacent spaces are immune to damage. Very powerful, but also very weak. I think you're getting the idea. Some of these guys have some really, really high HP and low abilities, or even high HP, high abilities, low attack, low movement. Uh, Zeus, for instance, has got 10 health. Move in one direction, in any one direction. Uh, t it attacks 10 damage, and it's three direct non-diagonal spaces, so just a straight lightning bolt. Additionally, it can at his attack can pass over friendly or enemy pieces, so he can kind of direct who he wants to hit. Uh, and it just goes on from there. There's a bunch of different characters. Instead of a normal attack, do one damage to any enemy in exchange for one, minus one HP. Oh, that's really cool as well. Uh, but they all have their own uniqueness to them. And there's 12 of them, right? So that is pretty much all the different caveats for the game. Obviously, this is a chess-style game in which you're going to be maneuvering characters, placing them on the board. Uh, the game very, I like to play is utilizing all of them, so you have the exact same advantage as any other player. But how you choose to bring out your units is going to make a big difference. And obviously, certain units are going to counter others. Uh, another little thing I forgot to mention, too, is if your units can't move, if you're unable to move any of your units... So if for any reason you can't make an action, then the other player is going to win, which would seem kind of intuitive, uh, but I, I guess the thing is, or counterintuitive, but the thing is, these little chains here with Hades, whenever he gets next to somebody, he can put a chain on them as an action and basically freeze them in place. And so if you have a bunch of characters that can no longer move because Hades has willed it to be so, that can be a way in which you can lose the game. But for the most part, you're going to lose because somebody's going to jump onto your Mount Olympus area. So, what about the artwork? Love it. Good. Really fun. Really cool. It's got some of the more unique, darker aspects of the different gods. And they have a great, diverse, different uh, perspective for each of the different types of gods, which is really cool. I play a lot of the games that involve different gods, especially Pad. And uh, this one here does a really good job of illustrating the gods for Olympus. And the board is pretty straightforward. It's got the style of like good and evil mixed in. As you move across the board, you kind of have to go into the darker territory in order to gain access to, I guess, cross Olympus. I really just enjoyed this game. This is definitely going to be one of those games, though, for, is for specific type of people who like specifically chess-style games, uh, people who like Onitama, that kind of thing. It brings a little bit of interesting aspects to it, like HP. It brings into the fact that they move and attack in different ways, and some units can outright kill other units while others can't. Sometimes having low HP is great, but if you don't utilize it correctly, it can be a very high burden on you. And, of course, because you can't move through certain units unless your units say otherwise, it can be rather complex. There's a lot of strategy in this game. There's a lot of thinking ahead that makes a big difference as to whether or not you're going to succeed. And the players who play longer and know more about the game and the units are definitely going to beat you just because they understand how the units move and how they attack. There's definitely more characters in this game that require different movement rules and restrictions than probably something like the average understanding of chess would. But it's not that complex once you get it. I, I, I pretty much memorized a little over half the characters already and rarely will have to actually go back and look at what the characters say on here because I only need to know their HP, which is also represented on the character standee. I think what might be interesting, which uh, me and Grant differ on, is I would actually kind of like to see, instead of the uh, movement and the uh, special attack and whatnot illustrated on a separate thing, let me go ahead and grab that, because it has this illustration board, which we used for the first game specifically. Um, it shows you basically the movement, the attack, and the special, and it does that for every single one of the gods here, as you can see, and it gives you some quick rules and some variants to the game, but this is what I used a lot, me and Grant both used this a lot while playing the first game or two, and we used it quite a bit less as we played more, so I, I would probably add that to this card, I don't know if there's enough room or how you'd want to do that graphically, but uh, I think that would kind of help as opposed to you going back and looking at the book over and over again. And some players may have not as great memories as other players. 
I mean, I'm not the greatest at memory in general, but I don't know. It's something to consider, I suppose. But overall, it's a fun game. I like chess. I was in Bishophood in high school, so I played a lot of chess. I got tickets. I got tickets to go to Knott's Berry Farm because I won the chess tournament when I was in seventh grade. That's right. I I'm a pretty big deal when it comes to chess. So when it comes to chess games like these, I oftentimes enjoy them. I like thinking ahead of my opponents. I like the stress and the pressure of what move I need to do next, which is going to be the best move for me. And there's almost always definitely a best move. It's whether you can figure that out and then assume what your opponent is trying to do in the future. I also think that one of the characters is extremely powerful. It's the one that allows you to move like a knight and also to be able to jump on a specific ca character, which will allow you to win. I thought it was kind of funny. It's Dionysus here that you can move it like a knight, and if you jump on a character, you win. I thought it was kind of fun and interesting how that's added. But at the same time, one of our first one of our first games, I, I had my knight uh, here, and Grant had his character here. And regardless of what he did, I was going to jump onto that space, kill that unit, and win the game. So that's the only way that, that can actually happen with that specific character. Otherwise, you'll have to kill the unit and then get onto the space, whereas that one has a very powerful ability to do that. There are ways to counter it, however, and once, you when it, once it happens to you once, kind of like a five-move checkmate kind of thing, once it happens to you once, you're going to realize how to, how to avoid that mistake and probably find a way to counter it because there's many characters that can. But anyway, if you're interested in taking a look at Crossing Olympus, I think you're going to, uh, if, you, if you're one of the people who think you're going to be an audience for this game, I think you're going to like this game. It does have some interesting differences, though, from like Chess and Onitama, to where those differences are going to either advance your play perspective and the fact that you're going to enjoy this game more, or you're going to actually like it less because it involves a little more, it involves a little more about HP and all the characters and their different moves and abilities and all that. So if you want more, uh, as far as a gamer-friendly game, or gamer-style game going into a chess-style game, this is going to be something you should definitely pick up. Go ahead and take a look down below, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. All right, outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as check out the game Crossing Olympus. I'm going to add outtakes of how many times I said Olympics because I did that a lot. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're hitting up Pax U this coming month on the 6th, so expect some cool content. And I look forward to talking to you guys on our live stream every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, which is actually tonight, but this video won't go up tonight, so it's kind of me pointless saying this anyway. But anyway, go ahead and check out our friends at thingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, show me how to win. And before you play, a bunch of great little different uh, things you can take out a look at that all do different content and probably even better than my own site. All right, guys, thanks so much. As always, I look forward to crossing Olympus with you next time. <laughs>